Hello, welcome to the virtual Google Admin Enterprise Summit. Uh, my name is Gitter, and I'm joined today by Veronica and Charlie. Good afternoon, both. Hi, Hi Gitter. Hi, Charlie. Thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you for coming. Veronica, I'm going to hand over to you to get us started. Um, <laughs> Instruction to what's happening today, and then Charlie. Uh, Charlie Love is going to be our main speaker for the session today. So, Charlie, if you hang on in there a second, we'll get to you very soon, I promise. Veronica, stage is yours. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. So, hello, everyone. Welcome to our free virtual summit. We are up sevens and we are live. So, really, in the beginning, I would like to say huge thanks to our great partner, Acer. So, thank you, Acer. Uh, thanks to our great partnership, we are able to run uh, these free events. So really appreciate it. And I think it's great uh, benefit for everyone. We are huge Acer fans, uh, users, and we really recommend Acer devices. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, if you submit the survey, you have a chance to win free seats to our upcoming events. And I think it's a great chance. So feel free to submit a survey. Also, feel free to join our social media. Uh, you can use Twitter and different different ways how to share uh, different pictures, ideas, uh, different comments with us. Yes, uh, this is uh, this is great thing what we are doing. This is a great project. Uh, maybe Guto, you can mention also additional details to that. It's uh, ISTE certification. Uh, I think it's a really really recommended. Uh, Guto, do you have any any uh, yeah. any um, input I, because you are certified trainer? As someone who went through the ISTE certified teacher and ISTE certified trainer. Uh, myself, if you're not familiar with the standards, set of standards um, to not set of direct skills um, for technology for teachers, but more um, standards and guidelines we can follow to become uh, better uh, teachers with more focus on the pedagogy. The course where we can run in person is a two day course followed by quite an intensive six months of online work uh, with a lot of support coming from your trainers. Obviously, at the moment, so much of this is happening online. Um, therefore, instead of having those two days in person, we get cohorts running virtually. Uh, it's well worth looking into. Head over to bit.ly.isti online to find out more about that one. Certainly, the Google for Education Certified Coach is a new certification launched early this year, late last year, uh, on top of the previous certifications of being a Google for Education uh, Certified Educator, Certified Trainer, and Certified Innovator. The coach is focused more on those people who work either in a school or across a few schools, uh, working one-to-one -one with teachers who want that support uh, to become more confident in the use of digital technology. So not like a trainer where it's more, I guess, this, where people can conduct training sessions uh, to larger groups, but those who really get in to that one-to-one -one relationship with teachers, uh, that's a great course to go on to become a Google Certified Coach yourself. And I think finally, on there, um, you may, I'm sure actually if you're watching this admin session, you are fully aware that Google Workspace now has different tiers available from the fundamentals uh, all the way up to Google Workspace Education Plus. If you do want to try those out, um, at your school, then you can set up a free 60-day trial by heading to appsevents.com slash workspace. Excellent. I think a good time to make a quick introduction then. Um, my name is Gitto. I'm a teacher, so that's why I'm not the main speaker on this admin focus session. Uh, I'm one of the ones on the other end who just loves it when all the magic works perfectly. And when it doesn't work perfectly, we blame people like Charlie, who actually do all the hard work in the back. <laughs> um, yeah. Charlie, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so I, I mean, I'm I'm Charlie Love. Um, I've been working with Google Tools for 10 years plus, and, and um, you, you know, 
using the great strength of, of that, the cloud-based solution there, uh, uh, had it been through various iterations of Google's productivity tools. Currently, we've, we've got Workspace and, uh, and you know, rolled that out at, at scale in, in, in several different cases. So, um, yeah, so my, my role is really about working with technology, supporting schools and supporting the administration of, of Google Workspace as well. So it's a really interesting um, role that I have and, and lots of technical uh, information kind of goes through me. I, I do all the magic, Guto. That's my job. I, I'm I'm charge of magic. That, I know that we've uh, worked together in the past, but even just in the half hour this morning running through your content today, I was already going, Whoa, so much that I'm not aware of as a teacher who just sees everything working. So I'm actually really looking forward to learning myself today, let alone anyone joining watching. Um, I'm going to sit back and hopefully ask a few questions um, when maybe the technical level goes too high for my understanding. Um, yeah, keep the, now, keep the questions coming. That's what we would want. Yes. Well, it's worth pointing out there as well that if you are watching with us live today, you do have the uh, comment section on the side of YouTube there. Please do use it. Uh, the whole point of joining live is to be able to get answers to the questions that you have. So as Charlie runs through his magic tricks, uh, please throw those questions into the chat and uh, Veronica and I will keep an eye on them and make sure we bring them up to Charlie's attention. Uh, type them in there, and maybe at the end, we'll do a quick Q&A. Uh, unless, of course, Charlie, you explain everything perfectly and nobody has a question for you. That would be great to do that, but yeah, happy to answer questions when we get there, and and absolutely, uh, you know, please interact if you're if you're watching the, us live and, and do so, so great. In that case, do you want to give a quick uh, run through of what we've got to look forward for in the next, I think, half hour, four, five minutes? Yeah, absolutely. So this is really exciting today because it's all about mobile management and Windows 10 management. So what I'm planning to do is really just highlighting what you get in all the editions of, uh, of Google Workspace, pretty, mu pretty much the kind of free basic level of mobile device management uh, that you get with, with Workspace, which is really great for small to medium enterprises, for schools starting out on fundamentals. Great to secure your data, great to go to take you through that. So I'll talk about that a little bit about the basic MDM. And then of course, with the, the new additions that we've got of Google Workspace, we've got that advanced mobile management. So I'll talk a little bit about, take you through some of the features of that advanced mobile management, what it means, what the impact is in terms of security for your organization, um, your kind of what admins need to do to set some of that stuff up and just kind of raise awareness of, of some of those things. And then what I'm going to do is take us in a little bit more to look at Windows 10 management from Google Workspace. Crazy, right? You think, wow, mind blown. But you can now manage your Windows 10 devices from Google Workspace. You can manage not only your device management, but also your user accounts. Your users no longer need to have an account in Active Directory. If you're using Microsoft and uh, uh, Windows devices, you don't need users in AD anymore. You can have your users leverage the power of Google Cloud, the power of Google Workspace, and have all your users signing in, single sign-on, into Windows devices, Chrome devices, Android, iOS, just brilliant. It's like, as I say, it's like magic Guto, just brilliant. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today. And we'll just, I'll kind of just take us through that kind of introduction and we'll look at that um, mobile management to begin with. So yeah, and just interrupt me if you've got any questions. If there's anything to go, just just let me know. Okay. Can I start off with one quick before you get started? Because I know yeah. you've already, you've already um, hinted at it there, and I know you're going to mention it a couple of times forward, the different tiers of Google Workspace. Um, yes. Most schools, this has changed recently. They used to be um, enterprise and just non-enterprise, I guess. But now we've got a few different tiers. Do you want to give a quick overview of that so that it's more it's clear when you mention them later what comes under which tier? So if you think about the uh, education space, you've got uh, education fundamentals, which is your always free product from Google. That's the Google Workspace tools. And the basic MDM I'm talking about just now is available inside that fundamentals tools. So you get some basic MDM functionality in education fundamentals and in some of the um, early versions of the business and enterprise, uh, the business uh, workspace for business. So um, you get that there. If you're in education space, you then have an option to upgrade to um, the, now, 
It's education plus is one of the options. What's the other one called again? There's a teacher so, learning upgrade, isn't there? Teacher uh, learning upgrade, and then there's the um, the there's one before. But plus yeah. is everything, isn't it? Plus is the plus is everything. I think the, and the I can't believe that's gone out my head. Fundamentals is the one most was are on, I guess, by that um, originally, and then plus is everything, which is the security aspect, the admin aspect, and the teaching and learning. But then in the middle, you can just have the extra teaching and learning parts or just the extra admin parts. Um, so assuming most of you showed today, they'll definitely all be in the plus version, but I'm guessing most will also be in that extra um, admin and security package if you don't want the teaching and learning part as well, I believe. Yeah. What I was trying to, what the word I was trying to remember there was it's education standard, right? That's what I was trying to get to. So absolutely. So we have fundamentals, then you have education standard, and education standard gives you security and administration tools. So the advanced MDM and such that I'm speaking about today, that's all in the education standard. Then you've got the learning and teaching upgrade, which is slightly different, which is focused on the learning and teaching tools, and that's for, for, for teaching focus rather than the device management administration focus. And then you have the whole jing bang, the whole lot, which is in the uh, education plus, which is a fantastic end-to-end -end solution for any uh, education organization. So that's what we have within, within our workspace uh, editions uh, within, across the education space. And similarly, you have, uh, when you look at the feature sets, if you're using the enterprise versions, you'll see that you, there's different feature sets and you can look at those and evaluate those online and see the different feature sets that are available there. Okay, so um, what I'll do is I'll just uh, talk a little bit about uh, basic MDM and um, what that gives you. So with education fundamentals and with the basic products within um, Workspace, you have um, a kind of core MDM system. It gives you agentless management, so you, you don't necessarily have to have something on the devices. There is a policy that can go on the devices. Um, you can set a passcode. You can force a passcode. So you can't say what the passcode's got to be, but you can enforce a passcode on the device and say that device has to have some sort of passcode on it. So you can put in place some basic security. There's some hijacking protection, which means that if you get uh, an account that's compromised, you can wipe the devices that are using those accounts, for example. So you can go on and do that and, and wipe devices. And just so if accounts are vul vulnerable, you can take action to deal with that. Um, and then you've got some Android app management that you're allowed to do. So with Android app management, it, it's uh, you can specify, set up your own uh, Android app store. You can deploy apps to devices. You can make them available. And you can block and unblock devices from accessing the information in your domain. So it's a pretty much a kind of real basic core set of security features and mobile device management features that you'll get with um, that kind of basic MDM. But if you take a step up, and you look at the Education Standard, Education Plus, or some of the Enterprise, the enterprise Business Editions, you, you can then move forward and look at that kind of more advanced management. So with advanced management, you get everything that's in basic and way more. So you get things like, as an admin, you get to device audits and alerts around devices. So you can set up rules around devices so you get alerts when something happens with those devices. Um, so maybe a security issue that happens. Um, maybe it's a, a user account that comes, comes up as, as questionable. Then you can get information about that device and flag up that device. You can get device audits. So you can see the audit and connectivity for that device. So when did it connect? What services it, is it accessing? And for organizations that are provisioning devices at scale. Um, so if you're buying a lot of Android phones, for example, or Android tablets, you can now do um, automatic enrollment. So you don't, previously you'd have to touch the device to enroll it. You'd have to get it to an administrator who enrolls that device and sets it up and configures it and so on. But what you can do is if you have the device serial numbers, you can upload those devices as company-owned devices, and then all of the profile and the information set up the device automatically goes onto it when the user powers it on and connects. 
So zero touch enrollment, which is really powerful. Um, and then we've got things like remote device, remote device wiping. So you can just specify through the policies that you can completely wipe the device to remove your data from it. Um, and you can add in not just company-owned Android devices, but you can also add serial numbers and have company-owned iOS devices. Uh, um, and why would you do that? Well, I'll come to talk about context aware and access in a second. Um, but you can also deploy sec uh, device security certificates. So if you have certificate sign-ins to Wi-Fi or certificate sign-ins to particular services, you can use security certificates and push them out to the devices to give you secure connections. And context aware acts is a huge game changer. So give you a use case. I, um, you know, if you've got staff in a school, staff might go on holiday. Staff might go off and, you know, <laughs> when we could go on holiday. Imagine, remember that? <laughs> remember when we could that, go that on holiday? That was a lovely thing to be able to do, wasn't it? Yeah, you could change location. You could change country that you were working in. But I might have a, you know, I might have a security issue. I might not be very comfortable with people using um, my Google Workspace domain and potentially taking data out of my domain and using that in another country. So with context aware access, I can set up rules to prevent people signing in from other ge geographic locations. So if I'm in the US, I can say, um, but I'm trying to access a service in Europe or UK, for example, I can say, right, I'm gonna block, I'm gonna allow access to Gmail, we're going to block access to Drive and Doc Sheets and Slides. And so that context aware access allows you to set up rules about who can access what from where and in what context. Is is location the only context that I would look at or are there different types of um, context that can trigger those access rules? So there's, there are different types of contexts that you can use. Some of them can be IP addresses. You can have um geolocation data and so on um so there's a number of different variables that you could use in, in those rule sets which gives lots of flexibility to administrators so you could lock down access to workspace as an administrator so that it's just when people are actually physically connected to your network infrastructure that yeah. they can access the tools um so you could you can you've got the flexibility and the power inside Google Workspace to, to manage it as you need as an administrator. So it's really powerful. Quick okay, question for me. Yeah. Um, you mentioned there that under the advanced features, there's <coughs> iOS devices in the well. How many of the MDM features are um, dependent on having Android phones and Android tablets? Um, and what can you do if you do have those company-owned iOS devices I see there in the list? So if you've got a company-owned iOS device, it's all about the connectivity to Google tools. So it's all about the connections to workspace. You can do things like you can you can um, manage the apps on the device. You can do a, make it so the devices are automatically signed in. Um, so you've got some functionality around iOS. You don't have an app store like you would have on Android devices, so you can't customize that app store. But you do have that kind of basic controls that you need around using and accessing the system. Great, thanks. Grant. Um, so that's a little, little bit about the kind of advanced MDM piece. Uh, I think it's maybe just to move us on to talk about um, Windows 10 management. And this is a real game changer, I think, for, for schools and for small and medium enterprises when you're looking at what you can do with Google Workspace um, to manage your the Windows of the devices state. Because folks have a a range of different devices that they might use in their organization. And this gives you the chance to bring everything that you have under one set of management and, and one set of access credentials as well. Um, so with Windows 10 device management, there's really two parts to it. There's a kind of settings management that allows you to specify, um, you know, what, privileges admin users can have when they sign into the device. You can enable the BitLocker encryption that's native on Windows um, and manage updates just the same just the same way that you can manage updates around Chrome OS, you can now manage updates around Windows OS 
um, on Windows from Google Workspace. And you've got the option, again, to manage the device and manage the um, the kind of custom settings on it. So today what I'm going to do, um, because it's a nice, really nice visual example, I'm going to show you how I can change the wallpaper on a Windows device from Google Cloud, from Workspace, from the admin console, and how we can go in and do that. But you can also do things like disable USBs, uh, put in place a number of security security pieces. You can, you know, set screen lock time uh, and so on, change the login screen, all of that you can do using these particular custom settings that are available. Um, and then with that, you also get the device management bit. So again, just like we can otherwise, you can wipe a device, uh, wipe the data from the device. You can get details around which devices you've got managed. You can see users where they sign in and get audits of their activity. And I'll take you in and let you see some of this inside a Google Workspace environment that's actually running. Um, and you can do things like unenroll devices when you need to remove them and such as well. So it's probably worthwhile that um, I maybe talk about how that's done uh, and take you in to have a, a look at that in just a second. So in terms of how you actually make this work, because that's what admins want to do, right? You, as an admin, you want to understand exactly what you need to do to make this work. So there's two, develop, as I mentioned, there's kind of two parts to this. We've got the device management and we've got the sign-in management. So this can be done through a tool called, it's the GCPW, Google Credential Provider for Windows. And when you install that, when you install that piece of software, it allows you to leverage your Google sign-in on a Windows device. Same password, same, all that works across the whole piece. Single sign-on with your Google credentials. Um, so you, you get to use that. And then you can also set up the Google credential provider for Windows so that it um, so that it uses, um, it automatically enrolls the device in your Windows 10 device management at the same time. And I'll show you how that's set up and how that's done uh, using um, the admin console in just two seconds. So I'm just going to share my other screen. You, uh, you, could, gonna... sorry, sorry, you, you could run this alongside your, I guess, your previous Windows device management system. Yeah, so I mean, what's really neat here, right, is I think if you're using a Windows infrastructure uh, and you've got Active Directory, Active Directory lets you manage the device. Um, and you use a tool called SCCM to normally push software out to the device. But I think that what the game changer really is here is you no longer need to have users in Active Directory if you want to embrace Google's cloud and Google's the cloud infrastructure and, and desktop for Google Drive. Um, if you want to embrace all of that technology and leverage what you've got available there, you can now leverage that to the max by reducing your footprint on your Windows infrastructure. So you don't need to have users in there. The users can be in Google Cloud, in Google Workspace, um, and you could have just have the kind of some bits of the elements of the device management through there. But there's also another one, which is if you think of uh, you know smaller schools or small enterprises or businesses that have no Active Directory set up, um, this gives them a way to manage Windows devices that they never had before. Yeah. So they were just sitting with standalone devices, so maybe two or three devices in the back of a classroom or you know, three devices in an office, just standalone machines that we use. Now those devices can be brought under some kind of management, all using the power of Google Workspace. So it just gives you options that we didn't have before. So let me just drop into um, the admin console and let's uh, see what that looks like. So I'm just going to share a screen here, and Guto's going to pop that up on there. Um, so what I've got here, folks, I've just shared the screen of this particular device that I'm using, and uh, I've got the admin console here. And I'm just going to go in and show you where you get GCPW in the Google admin console. So, uh, so we're just going to pop into devices. Can I do one quick favor, Charlie? Can you zoom in your Chrome window a little bit? Oh, that's, there we go. That's much better, isn't Lovely. it? Lovely, thanks, brilliant. Yeah, that's what I was looking to do. <laughs> so I've zoomed in a bit, that's grand, thanks. Um, so we've got devices and I'm just going to 
pop into mobile and endpoints, and I'm going to go down to Windows settings, inside settings. So here I get to configure our settings for Windows. And the first thing I want to do is have a little chat about GCPW. So you always come here to download the most recent version of it when you want to use it. And interesting, the way, the way it works, okay, is that um, there's a built-in token. Why do you need a token? The token links GCPW to your Google domain. So it, it associates this download and this application with your domain. So, and it will use that when you set up and install the application um, when, and when the user signs in the first time. But you can reset it. Maybe you've got a security issue and you want to reset it or you want to regenerate the token. You can do that. Um, but what I, what I typically do is I come here, here I download the 16-bit client, install that on the, on the machine. You can install that with SCCM and push that out to all your users and have that on all the devices. So that's the download for G GCPW. And the next part is you specify or you can specify a specific domain. So if you want to limit who can sign on to particular devices, uh, which Google domains can do it, then you can limit it here. So I've just said, I've got a couple of domains here associated with this particular workspace that I'm using. And um, I've put both of those domains in here. Nobody else, no other Google domain will be able to sign in with these credentials. It'll just be the ones that I've allowed as part of this setup. Would, uh, would that as well stop you from logging in to the Windows with a non-Google credential? So if you wanted to log in with a non-Google credential on the Windows device, you can still have local accounts on it. Right. Um, so you can still have those. Um, and it's, you know, you can set that up and have that in, in place if you if you need to. So yeah, you can still have local accounts and you can still use your, your Google accounts. And there's and there are settings around around that as well. If I go into the GCPW settings, what we've got is there's automatic update where you probably want that on. And then interestingly, there's allow multiple accounts. So you could say one user, one device. So once somebody's signed in with the Google credentials on that device, you don't allow anybody else to sign in with Google credentials. So you could see that there could be good reasons to do that. Um, and then there's the automatic enrollment of that device in your management when, when somebody signs in. So um, when I've got this, I've just set this to on, so my device is automatically enrolled. And I've also enabled offline access. And the reason for that is if a Windows user is you know, sitting on the train <laughs> with poor connectivity, perhaps, they can still sign into the Windows device and get local access to all the services on the device. So fine, that seems like a good thing to enable. But you might have use cases where you don't want that to be enabled. Um, so I've got the device, the setup is in, that's the Windows device management is enabled. I've done that there. And then this is an interesting one because what I've done here is I have um, for the domain, um, I've said that anyone in the domain signs in, they, they are a standard Windows user. So they get the standard Windows privileges, but they don't um, get admin rights. However, what I have done for the organize it for the OU that's admins, for my admin OU, I've said any admin signs into the device, they get administrative rights. So you can manage that that basic administrative level admins or standard users on the device, which is great. Um, and then you can also specify particular local accounts that get admin access as well, which you can do. So that's the kind of account settings piece. And then I suppose finally, a couple of things, enabling BitLocker, which I've said that you can do. I haven't, I haven't done that, but you can enable BitLocker and, and force that to be on, on the devices. Um, so I suppose it's probably a good time for me to, to show you if I switch across to Windows. So here's Windows, um, a Windows virtual machine that I've set up. Uh, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so I've signed in, I've got a user here. I've signed in a couple of times on this device and I could add another account, but I've got this account, which is mine. I've expired the session. So one of the things I did is I could remotely log me log off a user 
from the cloud. So I've done that in this case. I've gone on into the admin console, into the sessions on that device. I have, re I have remotely logged this user off and that takes them out of everything on there. So I've taken them out of everything in there. And this is single sign on as well. So when I sign in, it's automatically going to sign me into Chrome and into my other services as well. So um, just to let you see what the sign-in looks like, uh, I'm going to just sign into this device again. And the very familiar Google sign-in screen is going to come up here in just a second or two. Um, and I'm going to be able to sign in just as usual. And if I had two-factor authentication in, uh, available, as you can see, two-factor authentication um, kicks in. And of course, I've just switched my phone off. So it's going to take me a second to get that. But if I had two-factor authentication in, in place, as I do, um, I'll have to go through that authentication process. So that, that's, that's something that I need to be able to do on it. Let me just authenticate myself with my phone here. Now it's timed out because I didn't authenticate quickly enough. So I'll try that again while my phone starts up. That's why you should never turn your phone off. Well, I turned my phone off thinking I didn't want my phone to interrupt me. And it was, a, <laughs> it was an epic, a fail of epic proportions now. It's a good um, demo of how important having 2FA is, though. How important yeah, absolutely. is you're the admin of a Google Workspace domain. You need that two-factor authentication on. So, absolutely. A few totally moments of drama in the middle of a session. Yeah. So let me just wait for my notification to come up as my phone connects. Just thinking about it. Come on, phone. <laughs> I put it here. send it. Wonderfully seamless two factor system is where you've got your phone switched on, but it's great if you've got it on your phone. Um, yeah, uh, let me just be two, I'll be back in two seconds. No problem at all. What I'm going to do, I've just got another device that's set up for this. So I'm going to use that one. Well, he does go away, um, just because two step verification is what's caused that hiccup today. Uh, important reminder that can be switched on in the admin panel for any user, not just for the admin. Um, I know that plenty of schools do have it enforced for their staff. Charlie, is that something that you have yourself or do you enforce it for some of the other um, staff at the schools you work with as well? I think two-factor authentication absolutely needs to be on for administrators and pro possibly for, um, you know, if you're thinking of a school setting, and anyone who's got more sensitive data they've got access to definitely have it switched on. It's not a big deal normally to set up and, and use. It's not not a problem to use. What is my only issue here today is that I'm too secure for my demo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to give it one more go. And I have a backup account here that I'm going to use if I don't get connected this time. So let me just drum roll, one. please. Drum roll, please. Absolutely, that's what we want. Right, here we go. And do we have the pop up? Yeah, we're working. It should be there. Resend my notification just in case. Okay. Well, <laughs> one of those type of apps. It? It's just because I, I can't. Yeah, you know, it, it is crazy because I did. It, it's just because I switched my phone off and it's just my phone is still starting up and connecting, which is a real pain. Um, but. Let me, uh, does it let me try another way? I'll just go to the Google Authenticator. Oh, and now it gives me the thing to tell me it's okay. So it's and now coming. Back, you had the Authenticator app. I, oh, yes. Yeah, so I always have multiple ways of doing it. Um, 
Here we go. Yes. I think my... Uh, now, to that, hey. we're in. There's the magic. The magic is back. Magic is back, and it's all good. So, you know, this is why you need two-factor authentication, right? Because it, it, it gives you those multiple factors to prevent people getting access to your accounts and being able to use them in nefarious ways, steal your processor, steal your data, steal your identity, all of those things. So absolutely, and protect your users as well. So having... The one actually thing I'd add there, Charlie, is you had the notifications options and then the authenticator app options. And yeah. two very secure options. There is an option. Is it still there to have a text message sent to yourself, which is always that less secure? Yes. Version. Yeah, so text messages. So you can get a text message. You can have the authenticator app. You can have um, an authentication message sent to your phone. And you can use a physical USB key as well. So you can have multiple. I like to... As you can see there, I've set up multiple of the second two-factor authentication methods, um, which is, gives me just additional ways to secure my account as I go in, which is always really good. So if one, you know, if you don't get one to work, you can switch and and, and use the other as well. But we're so what, yeah, so but now I'm in, and you can see it's automatically signing me into my Google Drive for desktop. So I've got that that straight in. It's signed me, you know, I'm I'm signed in. Um, I'll be saying, and you can use Chrome. Um, so it's just uh, just checking who I am. So I've got this, and I'm signed in, and I'm signed in using my Windows credentials, so, so my Google credentials, and I've got a wallpaper here that's on on my desktop. Now, as an admin, uh, you know you might want to change the wallpaper. This is just my my demo that I want to show. So under custom settings, there's a range of different things you can do. Now, um, what I'm doing here is just using a, some couple of custom settings. The first one is I'm using Google Drive files. Um, I'm using desktop for Google Drive, which is the replacement to Google Drive file stream, which streams my files from the cloud to my device with the option to keep certain ones offline if I want. Uh, or you could do an image one if you want. You can set it up to image if you really want to. But the best way to do it is to use files and stream them from the cloud so you only have what you need to work on when you're on the device. So I'm using a desktop for Google Drive, which means why on earth would I want to use OneDrive? I've no need to use OneDrive. So I'm going to disable OneDrive for all my users because I don't want them to be using that service. I'm using, we're using the Google Drive service. So I can disable that. So I can just disable OneDrive file string, sync. I can do that from uh, using the mobile management custom settings inside Google Workspace. And what I can also do is I could edit the wallpaper. So I've got a wallpaper that's here. That's the one I was showing you there. Um, just the kind of, um, the image that I've got around um, it shows the Stadia controller, but I'm going to change that to a lovely picture of a sunset and a bridge. And that's what I'm going to do. That's, a, that's the new link that I've just put in there. And all it's doing is just, I've got an image online and it's just going to pluck that image and, and, and make that image my uh, Windows background. Now, so next time when I sign in, so I'm just going to sign out. And my sign-in will be easier this time because <laughs> my account is already synced and on the device. I've set a two-day, I've set a two-day re-verification with the cloud. So my password information and hash is now on the Windows device. So when I sign in. Um, you'll notice it's now the usual Windows sign-in because I'm signing into the Windows it. device because I'm already authenticated with the cloud. But every two days, it will when you log in, it will send you back to that Google login to re-authenticate, will it? Yeah, absolutely. So it'll it'll check online and check the, with my cloud identity every two days. You can specify how long you want that to be. It's up to you. You can set that setting up. And here I am. Oh, the wallpaper's changed, right? As, so, as, beautiful, as beautiful as the sunshine is, you know, my state of controller right here, maybe not <laughs> the best thing to for a whole school, I understand. So just, and really just, just to give you a visual idea that, you know, what I've just done is 
uh, I have um, used Google Workspace, Windows 10 management to go in and to um, uh, go to go in and change the wallpaper and manage the Windows device uh, very you know in a very straightforward manner. So there's lots of different custom settings you can get in the admin console here. These are all the same um, URI strings that are used in Intune device management. So if it works there, it, work, it should work here. Um, these the, all policies are there. So there's things around you know uh, screen lock times, USBs, uh, changing wallpaper, changing log on screens, preventing access to VPNs, enabling you know whole range of things that you can manage on that terms of that Windows 10 device. Uh, so really really useful for administrators. Great next step into embracing the cloud, particularly around the identity piece. And remember, even if you're your organization, even if your school is on education fundamentals, you can still use GCPW for the authentication and sign in. You won't get the device management features, but you will get the identity on the Windows device. So you don't need to upgrade for, for that. You can use GCPW and just sign into a Windows device with your Google Workspace credentials. But if you want to have that plus all the power that I've showed you with device management, then you, you need that upgrade. So a couple more things that I'll just show you while we're here looking at devices and Windows settings is that we do get uh, access to kind of endpoints reports. So who's doing what? So um, here I am. This is me just signing in just now. If I go in here, this is the Windows device I've just been using. So I've been using um, this is a device I've been accessing. Uh, this is my account. It's been using that particular device. Um, so I can see some information about that. I can sign the user out. I can delete that device or view audit information. If I go to view audit information, then I get details of what's happening on that particular device. So here's me changing the wallpaper. Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, is that me changing the wallpaper? I must be using a different device there. So yeah, so here's me changing the wallpaper for demo. So here's me changing the wallpaper by changing that sync on that this particular device. Um, here's me signing into it, uh, succeeded in signing into it. That's policies applied, restricted group membership. That gives me the uh, admin. So you get on here, you see how we've been, um, how the accounts have been accessing the device and so on. And who's been doing what and when? Hope that's hopefully that's clear enough. So this is me on my virtual machine, and uh, yeah, so that's me on the virtual machine. This is me on a, a Mac device. So it just gives you that all that log of when you applied changes, how that was done on the machines, and so on. Uh, to be changing the wallpaper back to the other one, applying that policy. Um, so you get that kind of rich admin information there. And then finally, I think I'll just maybe talk about um, company-owned inventory. So you can specify a device as company-owned, and you do that by uploading the device serial number uh, into the company-owned devices area inside Workspace. And this, once you've done this, you can then use the serial numbers or the, detail, or the fact that a device is company-owned to use it in context-aware access and come up with the rules to manage your data. So it's a really useful way of just adding to your inventory and making the distinction between devices that your users have, like their own personal sure. devices. You might have bring your own device. So the personal devices and then um, the company-owned devices that you perhaps might be a little bit more confident around some of the management around those particular company-owned ones. So. That's just a kind of quick overview today of what we've got in terms of um, Windows 10 device management and a little bit of look at some of the advanced mobile management that we've got inside Google Workspace. Um, so I think if I just carry on here, um, we can pop back, go to, I think, to the screen. Yeah. Um, and we can start to, to wrap this up. Any any observations from your end, Guto? 
Yes, and, and actually the screen I just put up is a perfect um, representative I was going to ask. We, you mentioned Windows 10 a lot, obviously, um, in terms of the device management. We are in the world where Windows 11 is now a thing or soon to be a thing or um, becoming yeah. widespread, hopefully, uh, over the next few months. Do you see much changing in the relationship between the Google Workspace device admin um, in Windows 11 as opposed to Windows 10? I don't see a huge change happening. I mean, it's the there tends to be kind of parity around mobile d- d- device features. The URIs that are built in to manage Windows 10, I'm sure they'll still be available in Windows 11. That's you know consolidated tied into how you lock down and manage those devices. So um, I don't anticipate there being a big difference. And I think what we'll see as as things tend to develop, you tend to see more functionality being added. So yeah. hopefully we'll see even more that we can do with Windows 11 than what we could do with Windows 10. But yeah, I, I don't anticipate there being a big difference. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, well, I did say at the start that uh, if you explained yourself perfectly, we might uh, you might survive without too much questions coming. And uh, this, if you for those of you who are live, this is your last chance to suggest a question in there uh, while we run through our closing information today. So any questions, Charlie, please throw them in there now. Um, otherwise, I think I can throw a slightly different screen up and invite Veronica back to join us uh, for final. Hi, Veronica. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you, Charlie. It was really interesting. It's always interesting for me, to be honest. You know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I, you know, I hope folk, folk have got something from that. I think it's a it's a great bit way to manage your devices. Um, you know, and I think that Windows 10 offering inside Google Workspace plus signing in with those credentials just means you've got one set of usernames and passwords to remember. It just makes life easy. You know, that's what we want. We just want an easy life and our it's, technology to be seamless. I think when you mention the fact that you don't need to run your users through Active Directory now, that you've already got them in Workspace because that's where you have to set them up for their Workspace tools. And the fact that you then don't have to go and duplicate all that work in Active Directory for their Login accounts to Windows. I think for me, that's where I'm like, ah, oh, that's the big time saver there. Yeah, absolutely. Just, just makes a lot of sense. You know, just reduce your admin overhead, keep things simple, and uh, work works really great. So yeah, so thanks, thanks for letting me share that today. Really, it's been really great to do that. Huge thanks for coming and sharing it, Shelley. Thank you so much, Shelley. Yeah. Um, Veronica, I'm going to throw back on screen a few of our closing slides. Um, if you'd like to take us through them. Yes, definitely. Sure. Thank you, Guto. Jess, uh, we would like to mention again uh, our video. So feel free to subscribe our tips and tricks uh, on the YouTube. Uh, Charlie is uh, recording uh, admin tips and tricks. So it's really interesting. So you can learn a lot of new stuff there. Also, feel free to watch and subscribe our podcast. Uh, you can see the links on the website or on the screen now. Oh, sorry, I'm the wrong way there. There you go. <laughs> so, and again, we would like to say huge thanks to our great partner, Acer. We are able to run uh, those summits for free just uh, due, uh, thanks to this great cooperation. So, thank you so much. Yeah, and again, reminder, feel free to subscribe uh, our uh, survey. You have a chance to win free seats for our upcoming events. Yes, uh, this is uh, just invite for everyone uh, to join our next virtual Edge Summit. So it's going to be in the beginning of August. Uh, our great uh, colleague Lisa, based in the US, is going to run the next one. It's obviously every country um, have their different start and finish dates to the year. But as someone was on his very last day of school term here in Wales today, seeing the words back to school, uh, so, <laughs> down your spine when you're on the first day of the holiday. <laughs> uh, I'll, okay, I'll jump with this one. The uh, Google Educator Level 1 and Level 2. Um, they are for uh, anyone who's in you know, a teaching class or working in school where they have plenty of using workspace in the classroom. Um, there are certifications that they can get. It's a three hour exam uh, that they set to get there. But we do run boot camps to help people to learn the skills needed, not just focusing on the exam itself, but also on how those tools are used in the classroom. And they're running 
Um, I don't think there's some August 3rd, 4th, and 5th there. Again, running virtually so you can join wherever you're based. Similarly, we mentioned ISTE certification at the start. Uh, new cohorts are starting all the time through the year. The next one on August the 5th. Uh, as I said, these, when we did these in person, and hopefully we will again in the not too distant future, these were two day courses with then that uh, online learning coming for a few months afterwards. Now they've changed into virtual courses, obviously, and they start running on August the 5th, uh, the next cohort starting. With a new cohort also then in October. Uh, as I said, every couple of months, new cohorts starting there. Yeah, a lot of chances. Yes, Monica. Yes, uh, this is uh, going to be the conference. Probably we will see how it goes. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we are lucky, but really it's it's really difficult to to say. Yes, well, I think we moved to online now, haven't we? It was, this was yeah. supposed to be a Bangkok-based conference, uh, the Connected School Conference in October. Due to obvious circumstances, this is now a online conference running on October first, second, and third. Keep an eye uh, at the Connected.School or Absence website as more and more information about that will start appearing uh, over the summer months. And I believe that's it. That's it. Uh, Charlie, one last time, thank you massively for coming in. Uh, thank you for showing us uh, all that different magic um, in terms of getting your mobile device management and Windows 10 uh, device and user login running as well. And for showing why even though it can be a hassle sometimes, two-factor authentication is a vital security tool for all of us. Um, even if we do have to roll with the punches when uh, it blocks us for a few seconds. Huge thanks, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Charlie. And <laughs> also, uh, thank you, everyone, to uh, the participation, uh, your attention. So feel free to join our upcoming events, free events, different certifications, different projects. So watch our uh, videos, uh, check our website, and follow our social media channels. Thank you. Thank you so much, and have a great summer. Thanks, everybody.